What up, guy? What up? What up? Hopefully, y'all doing good, man. I'm doing good. I'm actually pumped for this video. I'm excited. And uh, this is actually going to lead to a few other videos that I'm going to be making. So, in this video, we're going to be talking about how to download all of the files in um, AWS S3. And we're going to save them locally. But we're going we're gonna to add some logic. If there's there happens to be any like sub, I'm going to call them subfolders, but prefixes in S3, right? When, if you have folders in there. Uh, we we want to create folders as well locally, right? Because we want it to mimic on how it looks in um, in S3. So we're gonna go through that process, and um, there are gonna be other videos where we're gonna take the same code, and then we're gonna end up downloading files and upload them to SharePoint, for example, right? Like migrating them over, whether it be SharePoint, whether it be S3 to a storage blob, things of that nature. But again, for now. We're going to kind of walk through the process of just downloading all of the files, objects, pretty much right in, in uh, AWS S3 to a uh, local directory. But before we get started, guys, go ahead and hit the like button. Give me a follow, guys. I appreciate it. Hit the like button. All right, guys, let's get started. Um, Pretty much this is a, a new project that I created. It's, you know, you can tell it's pretty empty. There's a few things that we need to do first before we get started. So the first thing is let's go ahead and create our, um, our virtual environment. So that's going to be my first thing to do here. All right. So what I'm going to do, um, let's get that configured, right? So it'll be VNMV. Oops. And I'm going to call it ENV. Yes, cool. Now let me go ahead and activate it. Again, if you're using Linux or Mac, scripts will be bin, but in Windows, it's scripts. Cool. So now that we have that um, activated, now we need, there's going to be two packages we got to install. So let's walk, let's, let's go through that real quick, right? This video is not to go over um, packages installation, um, but those again, there's two packages we got installed. So let's get that installed. Uh, Bottle three is one of them because we're gonna be we're gonna be accessing uh, AWS S3. So this is the package we're gonna use, and then the other uh, package or Python environment package. So it'll be Python install, pip install, Python. Environ. All right. So now we have that installed. Cool. We got those two packages. Um, let, let me go ahead and just get that freezed out so I don't forget. All right. Cool. There's all our packages. Uh, the next thing is since we're using Python and Viron, this is where the .env file comes in. So I created a sample. This one already has all my configurations, so I don't want to show it because they're going to have my AWS access key, secret key, that kind of stuff. So let me just show you the sample. This is pretty much how it looks right now, right? I have my access key, which again, have it populated there, secret key, have it populated there. And then of course I have my bucket name, right? So in this case, YouTube storage one zero zero four five. And if I go to my browser, you can see I'm inside my bucket here, YouTube one zero zero four five. And there's a few folders in here. There's staging, unloading products. So there's nothing here, but let's, un you know, we'll get some data loaded in a few. And then under staging, there is files in here. There's one file there. Uh, product summary, there's a few files. Unloading, there's a few files. So we've got files scattered in, in a few folders, right? So let me go back. Uh, that's our bucket. And then we also, there's a section for bucket prefix. So again, this, what I have here is staging product summary. So I do have a, a uh, folder in here called staging 
product summary, and then of course I have my files. So the reason why I have this in here is we're going to add logic to be able to download all the files that can, that that exist in the bucket, or you're only going to download files for a specific subfolder that exists, right? At the end of the day, um, the way a uh, S3 is managed, it's really think of it as as uh, the term what it's called, right? You got one bucket and all files are being dropped in there. These subfolders that we're used to using that just kind of helps us out. They're not really folders. They're just uh, think of it as um, like metadata, right? That it's is being applied to an object for the purpose of us helping us visualize the structure of it. That's all it is. But at the end of the day, everything being just dumped in one big old storage. Then of course we have this local uh, directory. This is going to be your directory, right? So uh, for example, I have a folder. Uh, let's see. Under downloads, files, and it's empty empty this out so this is where i'm going to be um downloading all of the files into so you could tell there are no folders in there right now it's blank but what should happen it should create the folders and you know download all the files to the proper folders so and that's kind of where it's all part of again everything's all configuration so this is part of the configuration here again the my actual access key and uh, secret keys are in my this other dot env but i just created the sample so you could leave the visualize on what i have right this is what i ultimately have uh let's close that out all right so what we're going to end up doing next is uh let's start writing our code so let me create a new file and i'm going to call this um download um s3 files py right so that's what i'm going to call it download s3 files py we got our two packages installed so let's go ahead and import everything that we need we're going to need a few few things so we're going to need like the os and json so that's number one uh we're going to need our um boto3 we're going to need um on our environment variable package that we installed uh we're going to need um from pass lib import pure pass so we're going to need this because we're going to need to kind of build the the pass of again kind of going back to the sample the local directory and the actual file itself like the file name we have to you know uh, concatenate those two together and pure pass is the the way to go because it works on linux macs and windows and those of you who, who have worked with mac or linux and then switch to windows the forward and backslashes are all different right depending on your operating system um all right so now let's get let's get a few things set up we're going to set up our our environment variables um we're going to pull that in so keep in mind by default this package is looking when we when we do this it's gonna and we're gonna end up doing a read right so we're gonna do environment dot um env dot read in env so what what's happening here it's going to be reading um uh a dot env file so what what what, what that means is looking in your in the local directory pass is looking for a dot env which we have one here which again pretty much looks exactly like this if you're not familiar with um environment variable that have a video kind of going more details about it but it's there it's not complicated it's really it's a key value pair you have a key and then you have your value right so that's pretty much what it is key value so now let's go ahead and set up um there's a few things that we're going to want to read 
from here, right? We're going to want to read all of these keys that we have here. So let's go ahead and um, uh, let's create some some variables. So we're going to call the first one AWS access key ID. Um, and this one would be, what do we call it? I think we call it the same AWS access key ID. Uh, AWS, oops, um, AWS secret access key, uh, same thing, AWS secret access, let me make sure that's what I called it over here, uh, yep, that's what I called it. Let me just copy these be a lot faster. Uh, the next one would be bucket equals bucket name, uh, bucket prefix, bucket, I'm calling this sub folder. And the reason why I'm calling it subfolder is I think that just uh, that that I think anybody who deals with with folders that's kind of how we all know it, right? You got directories and then subfolders, and um, you know, so I'm gonna treat it that way just for the sake of being easier to understand. Um, then the final one is going to be local directory. So this will be local directory env local directory and as you could tell i don't have to call the name the same some of them got the same name some of them do not you know in my dot env it's bucket prefix but i actually choose to give it a different name right i call it bucket name i just call it bucket over here so just kind of keep that in mind that you could do that um what else okay um so i think that's it so you know what? I don't need JSON. I don't know why I brought that in. Let me remove that. Cool. I don't need it. Um, okay. So now let's go. We're going to create a function. And, and the first function that we're going to create, we're going to call this download files from S3. Right. And one of our parameters is going to be bucket name. Uh, prefix names equals none. Uh, well, you know what? No, it does need a prefix. So it doesn't have not none. And I'll explain that in, in a few. So let's go ahead. We're going to call our first um, object. We're going to be called client. And this will be calling Boto3 client. Because we're, we're going to be establishing a connection. What the hell happened here? Uh, you know what? That's why. All right, cool. I don't know what, what I did there, but either way. So it's going to take in three arguments, right? One, the first one will be S3. So this first argument, uh, let me see if I could, I could make this specify it again. Uh, it doesn't show. That's fine. So the first argument is you're specifying the service, right? In my case, it's S3. I'm accessing the S3 service. But it could be something else. It could be EC2. It could be um, glue. Like the list goes on or what it is, right? But in my case, is S3. All right. Uh, the next thing is going to be uh, AWS access key ID, which equals AWS access key. All right, then the next argument will be AWS uh, secret access key, AWS secret access key. So those are our three arguments, right? We need our our, our uh, ID, our secret key, pretty much our access key, secret key, and we need to specify the service. So that's kind of what we're doing there. All right, so the next thing, what we're gonna do here is get back a list of all the 
objects that exist in bucket. So this includes um, folders and files, right? So as when we get back objects, it's going to give us back everything, a folder, you know, the folder, if you want to call it, um, again, we know that folder, but that's technically is an object of its own that just doesn't have any files. Um, when you look at it plain, just from a, what it is, and then you could have files inside that folder. And then those are your objects. Um, I mean, everything's ob are objects, I guess you could say, but those are objects that have content in it. While the folders are objects without any content. So either way, it's returning back folder and files. Just kind of like if you were to do a OS walker on Python and you were to walk through a directory, it's going to give you back folders and files, right? So same concept. Um, so this would be object list, um, client list objects v2. So there is a version one. Um, I believe it's on the documentation. It recommends you use version two. You could use version, the original version, which is just called list objects, but I, it's, it recommends you use v2. So just FYI. Um, so one of our arguments here is going to be bucket. And again, this is going to be bucket name, which is this argument that we're populating here. And then another one is going to be prefix. And again, this would be prefix name would be another argument that we're passing in. And again, this is going to, this is going to give us back a list of all the objects and I could print it out just so you can kind of be aware of how that looks. Okay. So once we get that list back, we're going to have to iterate over that to be able to get back, um, the name. So the name of the actual file that is considered our key, right? So we're going to get, we, we need to get back that key as we get that key value back. Then we could call another function that would actually download the actual file, right? This is not downloading the, the objects. It's just giving us back the, think of it the, as the, the metadata, like all the details related to that bucket. That's all it's doing. No contents. Um, so we're going to do for object in object list. So there, this object that we get back, it's a JSON file. And one of the keys that we want to pull back from is going to be uh, the contents um, section. So the content section has a list of all of the, um, the metadata that relates to each object, right? So it would kind of tell us uh, what kind of object it is, you know, like if it's a folder or if it's a, some sort of file, um, it'll give us other information. I believe give the file size, give the file name, those, that kind of stuff. Again, I could print it out so you can kind of take a look at it, at least kind of be aware of how it looks. Um, so what we're going to do here is since I, now I'm iterating over each item, right? Of the list, I'll be able to see it. All right. Here's, um, one, one object or object two, object three, etc. What I need to do, I need to call my client get uh, object, right? Not objects, but just object. And this is gonna take in uh, two arguments. The first argument is gonna be bucket name. The second argument will be the key, right? Keep that in mind, key. So again, under this object, Cause again, we're iterating over the list. So now I have, uh, my, my object and there is another key in there. Cause again, it's a dictionary. Uh, there is a, a, a key name key and ultimately has the name of the file. Now in this case, this could be the full pass of the, the file name, which would be your subfolder. You know what I call subfolder, but you know your prefix names, and then of course your file name at the end. 
that's considered your key. So we are going to get a response back. All right, so let's we're going to assign the response to the response object. Uh, so now that we get a response back, we're dealing with files and folders as well. We can't save a folder because a folder is just it's an object that doesn't have no contents. So we're going to have some logic here. And the logic that we're going to do is going to be if response content type is not right is not uh, what is it application X directory um, uh, char set equals UTF eight okay so because because if it's a directory this is the content type that it has specifically for that directory now i think we probably what we could probably do here is actually slightly different right because they does have the utf8 and that could be different depends on how you can how you configured it so you know what let me do this i think the the better approach here would be um because I want it to be more like a it contains. So I'm going to look application X directory, um, not in the content type, right? So again, what, what I had earlier is the full content type for directories, but it could be different. Like, uh, um, I, you know, you, I believe you could change, change it to UTF 16, UTF eight, things of that nature, right? So in order for it not to be too specific, uh, we'll change it this way and this, I think will accommodate more scenarios. So ultimately we're saying, as long as it's not a di uh, directory, right? If it's not a directory, then what we're gonna want to do is we, we're going to want to um, um, uh, process that object. Cause if it's a directory, we don't want to process a directory. It's not a, uh, it doesn't have no contents, right? It, it's, it doesn't, it doesn't have no value to us, but if it's a actual file, we want to be able to download it. That's kind of what we're doing here. And then, um, for now, let me just put need to create save function. All right. So we'll come back to this, but ultimately we're going to end up saving the, um, the contents. So, but in order to do that, I'm going to create a save function, a save, um, file function, right? The save file function is going to end up taking a file name. Um, and then it's going to take the contents. So that's pretty much what we're doing here. File name contents it's taking both. So now let me, let's kind of get that set up. One of the things that I'm going to have to do here is, um, you know what? Another thing I need to bring in, I just thought about it. Let me bring it in the beginning. I need to bring in, um, um, location, uh, directory pass. So this is going to be where we're going to save it to, right? We need to save it somewhere. And then we got the file name, then of course the contents. So what I'm going to call this, it will be called file directory pass. We're going to use pure pass and then we're going to call location, uh, directory pass, which is one of our arguments. Um, then file name. Oh, what happened here, man? Oh, you know what? I know why I need to put pass down here. Cool. That was throwing it off. All right. So again, this is going to do a concatenation of my location directory pass, which ultimately is going to be this guy right here. And then it's going to do a concatenation with my file name. Keep in mind this file name, it's really is the subfolder and file name, right? So just kind of give an example. 
for file name if since we're downloading this from an s3 bucket it it is going to look like in this case it will be staging product summary then the file name so the way the file name would actually look would be um staging product summary and then file you know name dot text right or whatever it is like this is the actual file name so as we concatenate this with the local directory pass it's concatenating this the subfolders as well but we're going to add some logic to it to be able to to check if that subfolder exists um don't do nothing just save it but if it doesn't create the folder and that's kind of where now what i'm going to end up doing next is i'm going to call this directory pass and this will be os pass um directory name so what this and then I'm, again i'm going to specify directory pass so what i'm doing here is i'm going to specify this pretty much this directory pass which is going to be whatever the folder that i specify plus all of this as an example well now what i'm doing is i'm pretty much saying okay go ahead and remove the file name but keep everything else keep all of this and also the the, the local directory pass right it's going to just keep that string only and it's going to um i'm going to be able to do a check and and ultimately the check here is going to be if os dot pass dot exist and then i'm going to specify the directory pass right which is this guy here if that exists then i don't need to do i don't need to create the, the directory but if it doesn't we're going to create it and that's kind of where i'm going to call uh, my os uh, make directories because again what i'm saying is um my bad i said if exists i will need this seems to be if not exist if not os pass exists right so ultimately that that directory pass does not exist then we're going to create it you know first um and if it doesn't exist it just skips it because there's no need to create it right it's already there so let's see then the uh the next thing we're gonna do is now we're gonna write we gotta write the contents to um to the folder but we're gonna do this in chunks uh and this is ideal because especially with s3 you can be dealing with large files um this works for small files as well but again if you're dealing with large files this would be just very ideal so that's the reason why so we're gonna do with open and this would be file directory pass, right? Which is this guy up here. It would be uh, write binary as F. And what we're gonna do next is now that we got this open, we're going to do a for loop and we're gonna call this chunk in um, content because again, that's one of, that's the argument. That's the actual data that we want to save. So it will be content iterate chunks chunk. Uh, let's, so we're going to specify a chunk size. In this case, I'm just going to do 4096. Um, and then we're going to write we're going to write chunk so again this is going to be for us to save the the contents into the directory pass that again we specify over here and then there's logic to check does that directory pass exist and if the answer is no it creates it right because that's kind of what it's doing doing here uh, check if directory pass exists if not then create folder pretty much what it's doing okay so now that we have that now let's go let's come back over here to finish off this logic over here we're saying if it's not a directory 
then we want to be able to save the file ultimately, right? And this is where we will end up calling the save file function. We're going to pass in um, under the save file. We're actually going to pass in the local directory. Again, that's that coming up here on top. And then we're also going to specify um, we are going to specify object key because again key object key is the file name the file name that looks like this if it says has subfolders right and then of course to finish it off it would be object this is our content and this is coming from body uh, my bad it's not an object this is coming from the response so the response would have a, a key called body and that's our actual content itself. So that's what we're passing in, which is again, content file name and location directory pass on where we're going to save it locally. Uh, what else? I think that's it guys. So now what we could do is at the very end, I'm going to do my um, if name equals main again, every time you re we execute a file, like in this case, I'm going to execute the download S3 file because this file is the main file. It's going to execute any logic under my if statement. So in this case, I'm going to end up calling my download from S3. Then I'm going to specify bucket name and then bucket subfolders which is the prefix name that's it guys so one thing i do want to man why did this get imported in all right cool let me remove that so one thing that i want you to also understand see all how i have this staging product summary if i make that blank right keep that in mind if i make it blank it's going to download all the files that exist in my bucket so it's going to download these whatever then this unloading the pro whatever right going to download all the files but if i specify a specific pass it would only download files from that pass only and that's kind of where the that configuration comes in place leave it blank you want to download everything in the bucket or specify what pass and it would just download anything within that pass so that's something to kind of keep in mind. Um, what else? So, all right, I think that is it. But you know what? One thing I wanted to do is there's no file here. Let me upload some files. Let me drop some files in here. Oops. Just a random file. That's fine. Nothing special. Cool. Got that dropped. Let me go back. You could tell that it's empty. And um, yeah, guys, I think we're ready to run this. Before we run this, though, let me switch off real quick. I want to make sure that my .env file is going to my bucket prefix is empty, which it is now. Cause I would do want it to download all the files that exist, right? Not just some files. So let's go back to it. All right, guys. So now let's go ahead and run it. So all we have to do here is we're going to do Python download S3 file. That's it. And as I run this, it should be able to connect to S3 um, based on my configuration, download all the files in the S3 bucket, and then also locally create all the subfolders and download all the files to the right place so let's test this out and see if it works Ooh, that's not good what happened here um so i think it downloaded it in the wrong place let me check so it worked but let me check my configuration now i'm thinking it downloaded it to um, I know, I know what happened. 
so what happened here is and let me kind of show you real quick let me switch cameras so i printed out the local directory path see how it shows this it doesn't have the slashes in there so if i kind of come back if you do put um like in this case you would have to specify two backslashes oops um in order for it to to recognize it because if you only do one it does not recognize it so what happens it gets eliminated so you got to specify two of them two of these characters in order for it to slice it up uh to actually you know um do it properly so what what happened is it did not recognize this as being a valid uh, directory pass, which is why I saved it. You can see here locally on my device. Now it did work properly, it just didn't save it where it needs to. So it's something to keep in mind on that piece. So now let me go ahead and run it again. Again, if I go to my folder, it's empty right now. So once I run this, we should see files start showing up, and we do right. We got one folder showed up. And boom, we got two folders. So we have staging, product summary, all the files, unloading, these are all the files we had in there. And then of course, if I go all the way back, we have unloading, product, and then one file. So it literally mimicked what we had in S3, right? So just kind of keep that in mind. If I go back, that's exactly how we have it in the bucket. Staging, unloading, unloading, product, one file, uh, staging product summary those few files or unloading we have all of these files so that's pretty much exactly what happened here right staging unloading all of those files so yeah guys I mean again it wasn't too bad but ultimately this script would do that is going to connect to s3 bucket it's going to download all the files right all the files unless and let's kind of walk through that unless we specify a um, bucket prefix so just kind of keep that in mind if you do want to specify something you know let's say in this case staging unloading that's all you have to do under the bucket prefix you know make sure to you know specify staging unloading and then it's going to download all of the files only for that specific folder so leave it blank if you want all files, everything, right? All the folders, all files, or specify a, only a folder that you want. And then of course we added logic in our save file to, uh, to create it, right? If it doesn't exist, create the folder. So you can kind of mimic the same structure that we have on uh, AWS S3 bucket. Uh, so again, guys, this was a request that I got from, from a viewer. Um, I already kind of had, I actually got a re, got this request by a few viewers. So I had it on my list of videos to do. Um, so hopefully this helps you out, kind of give you an idea on how to download and how to be able to download all objects from S3 bucket. I am going to be making some additional videos where we're going to take the same code that we have when it comes to downloading. The difference is we're not going to save it locally. We're going to save it to SharePoint. Or we're gonna also, I'm gonna make a video where we're gonna do a migration where we're moving data from S3 um, to Azure storage. So anybody who's doing some sort of migration project where you could, you know, do that piece as well, right? To migrate that over. So again, guys, hopefully this helps. Um, give, me, give me a like, give me a follow. Appreciate all the support. Like always guys, y'all take care. Peace.